Hello and thank you for tuning in to Ducoscopy TV. Today I'm joined in the Geneva studio with Peter Frampton, CEO of Accounting Comes Alive International, which is an educational company that has found a solution to financial illiteracy. So Peter, you believe that there's a financial literacy crisis occurring right now that is hitting all industries at all levels. You think that accounting illiteracy is at the core of this problem. Why do you think that and what exactly is accounting illiteracy? Exactly. Well, account, financial literacy is well known, but accounting literacy is really a subset of financial illiter illiteracy. And accounting literacy sits at the bottom, and then financial literacy is on the top. And of course, un that underpins business literacy or business acumen, as people call it. So if people don't understand accounting, it really affects their understanding of finance and business. And can you provide our viewers with some of examples of this within the financial sector? You know, so people have a vague understanding of accounting, but often there's a lot of uh, confusion around terms, and they're not confident when it comes to reading financial statements. For example, FINRA, which is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, United States regulator of stock exchanges and so on, they've done research and they looked at quite sophisticated financial investors, and they showed them a range of financial statements and asked them to spot the differences. And the, the only differences were that the companies, some did and some did not use leverage, or in other words, borrowing of funds. And these fairly sophisticated investors could not spot the difference, which really goes to show that people aren't comfortable around financial statements. And what sort of problems this has caused for large financial institutions such as private banks? Look, the problem does occur at all levels, but certainly with people at their jobs, at the desks, particularly the junior people, they, they are limited in their jobs. The big problem starts with communication. Because there's a duality in accounting and terms are ambiguous, uh, people talk at cross purposes, people don't communicate with their clients as well as they could have, and really there's a lost opportunity in people doing their jobs better, and sometimes there's a real problem where the job is done badly and um, internal controls are affected, um, the funds that flow within a bank on track as well as they could be. And you've developed a solution to this problem. What exactly is it and where has it stemmed from? We have an educational solution which teaches people how accounting works better. And we very much approach accounting as a language. We started with a graphic. So what we've developed is really a graphical interface for finance. And this enables people to sort of unpack the duality. Um, Many of your viewers will know that there's what we call double entry in accounting. And this means that people can talk at cross purposes. For example, when they're talking about income, often one person will be thinking about cash and the other one will be thinking about income, which actually isn't cash. And so they talk at these cross purposes. And by having a diagram that you can really point to and you say, no, no, you're thinking of that. Actually, I'm referring to this. And you unpack these differences. And when we explore the language too, we get clear on what the words mean. For example, uh, the word income is a very problematic word. As I said, people think it's cash, and sometimes we, we ask people, what's the sound of income? Just to have them think about it, about what it is, and inevitably, from wherever they are, from Moscow to London, they always say ka-ching. But ka-ching is the proverbial sound of the cash register, so that's cash. So income is not cash, income is actually a verb concept. It's what you do, it's the activity that you do to generate the cash or other assets. And what are the main benefits to this? The benefits to the system are that people are um, better informed, that they have confidence, they communicate better. And interestingly, one of the benefits is that they engage more powerfully. For example, we work with a lot of lawyers, and the same I would say applies to bankers, that when they're more confident around the concepts of accounting, they engage more powerfully and they ask better questions. You know, from the board level down, um, often being effective in one, one's work is about communicating powerfully and asking better questions. And for example, lawyers, they don't want to be the ones to ask a, a dumb question. Nobody does. And if you understand that essentially in accounting there are just five concepts, assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses, you can rest assured that, you know what? my question is a good one and you engage much more powerfully. 
And who are the biggest financial organizations that use this graphical system? Well, there are some big names. Uh, we, we work with the analyst programs like the new hires at uh, banks and names you'll know like UBS, Swiss Bank, uh, Morgan Stanley and Wall Street and other big banks. And then smaller players as well. And, you know, we run the program in secret sometimes for senior executives who don't want to be known that they're doing the course. We also work with the Securities Exchange Commission and other regulatory agencies like that. So really the client base is quite wide. And Peter, you've just come back from Washington DC. What were you doing there? Well, we have our head office over there, but uh, one of the things I was doing is I was up on, on the hill, Capitol Hill, uh, at the invitation of the Financial Literacy uh, uh, Week, which is overseen by Senator Akaka of Hawaii. And we were doing educational programs for the Senate staff. So very gratifying to be working at all levels to try and make an impact on this accounting literacy, which impacts financial literacy generally. And what are the positive and negative responses you've received in regards to this new way of learning? Well, interesting, from the learners, we have wonderful um, sort of aha moments and people sometimes saying, this is life changing. <laughs> we laugh a little bit because it is only accounting after all, but it does have an impact on people's lives. In terms of the academic institutions, it's been a mixed response. We've, for example, we've been endorsed by the head of accounting, Professor, Professor Paul Healy from Harvard, Harvard Business School, uh, and yet, on the whole, academic institutions themselves are maybe, I want to say, a little bit threatened by a new and simpler way to learn a subject. Um, perhaps it's a natural inertia, but slowly we're making progress and um, we're offering some for credit courses through some universities down to the school system where we are working to really augment uh, widely the accounting curriculum at a school level, high school level. And you believe this financial literacy crisis is very much hidden. Why is that? Well, you know, it is interesting because accounting is a 500 year old subject and um, it's sort of been in the background. It was a niche uh, expertise that bookkeepers and accountants and financial controllers had. But more and more, everybody needs to be liter uh, literate in this skill of language. And I suppose one of the reasons why we managed to bring it out from sort of under the shadows is well, actually, it's a bit of history. It was 500 years ago that Pacioli in invented, in fact, he didn't invent, but he described accounting based on the system of left-right. Believe it or not, it's uh, debits and credits are about left and right. And then along came the color printer, the uh, Hewlett-Packard inkjet color printer in the 1990s. And this made color widely available, which meant we could use color as a distinction and as a distinguishing technology to really make accounting much better understood. And really, as I said before, it is the language that underpins all of finance. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching Dukascopy TV. Tomorrow, my colleague Monica Gibson will be looking at career management in the crisis. But for now, goodbye.